And that's what's happening in the body of Christ now. Folk may they can do any kind of thing and come to the same church you are or be in the same fellowship and think or get mad because you're getting breakthrough in your life and they ain't getting none of theirs. When they watch watching all these shows all night, you in the presence of the Lord. God is unmarked. How do you think yeah. you could get the same thing this brother get and you in you yeah, and he spent time in the Lord and you're not? No, no, no. no. God said, don't, don't, don't lose it yourself. No, you're lying to yourself. Another sister on calls all day, emailing, having business meeting, end of the week. The other sister ain't do nothing all week. And think God should give them to the same amount. No. Come on, that's why there's jealousy in the body of Christ, you know. Because somebody ain't doing something and expecting something from God what they didn't sow for. As long as the earth remains, there's a principle. There is what? Seed time harvest. That's in everything. Write that down. That's the principle. Another principle of financial wealth. As long as the earth remains, seed time harvest. The earth operates on seed time harvest. From God created the earth, seed time, seed time harvest. For God so loved the world, he gave a seed, his son Jesus, and in the fullness of time, he called many to be sons of God. Seed, process, and then harvest. That's how financial wealth is given, created. All right? Five years an undergraduate. When I came out, I taught. I made a certain salary. I went back and sold four more years, four and a half years, of study time. When I was finished, my salary that I made almost tripled. Or double, double and a half, something like that. Why? I sowed a seed and now I'm getting a harvest from it. Say, no, no, no. It ain't no mystery when you sow and you reap. Yes. No, don't deceive yourself. If this week you ain't saw nothing, don't expect nothing at the end of the week. Amen. If you ain't saw no prayer, don't expect power in prayer. Amen. If you ain't saw no fasting, don't expect power from fasting. Amen. If you didn't sow no financial seed, don't expect no financial seed at the end of the week. Amen. If you didn't sow no time and work, don't expect no salary at the end of the week. It's, it's no mystery. Don't blame God. Amen. And that's where the, 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 the deception come in the body of Christ. Because it's really from an error in the, from misunderstanding the word or not knowing the word. Now, can God send some stuff to me? Yes, he can. He's God. And he's blessed many of us with stuff we, we didn't even deserve, we didn't even work for. I believe this year is going to be part of that. But I also believe God wants us to step out in faith. Make some steps. Make some advancement. And as we advance, he's going to bring some stuff to us. But you got to step out. That's where the laziness come in. Proverbs said it, you know. Idle hands or lazy hand will come to poverty. A hand that is slack will soon come to poverty. Oh, thou sluggard. Most of the men in this country who ain't producing, lazy and a sluggard. Man's supposed to work. God has put something in a man to work. From Adam, man are to work. That's why I don't feel I don't get tired of working. I love working. Work is ministry. Ministry is work. Work is the kingdom. Kingdom is work. That's what God put man to do. Yeah. Women ain't supposed to be doing no hard labor or stuff, you know. Their body is not. Some of you, you marry some man. Hallelujah. Some men, women in this country who marry men and they riddle them down to pieces. Mm -hmm. Then their hormones are bad. Then the hair dropping out. Then the menstrual period off. Because why? They're carrying the lot of the family. I want to be in a place, you know, because of career. I wouldn't require my wife to just sit at home. But I want to be in a place where, I mean, you could stay home. Let me out of the man. Let me take her to the house. You want you have your career? All right. You don't want to give up your career. You spent seven years studying. It ain't fair for me to tell you stay home. You want to enjoy your career, but the minute it becomes a burden, hey, hey, take it easy. Mm -hmm. God 
didn't design a woman's body to carry the weight no. of the stress. Look at this country. The single women who struggle as illegal, as wrong, as wicked. Mm. And this is a generational curse that needs to be broken. And that's why some of these young women, I hear your heart. Only thing you've seen is a struggling woman work for you. You never seen a man struggle and work for you. Do you think a lot of women have this mentality that man ain't nothing and he ain't worthwhile and they gotta go there and do this and do that? But if they come in contact with a man who could take care of that, most women I talk who are professionals right now have seen women who are physicians when they have that child or pregnant. My God, they will tell you, boy, they wish they could stay home and mind the children. I've seen doctors give up a year or two to raise children. Because most women, I know one young lady doctor, six years, gave up to be a housewife. Spent eight years in medical school, one year internship. Got married, husband went to study. She just came back six, about six or seven years. I mean, yeah, about six years. Home as a housewife, raised in the family. It's built in every woman to be a mother and a wife or a career woman. Can I get the women to say amen? amen. It's the truth because a woman had is the home. Yes. If you look from the beginning of the times, that's how it was. It wasn't until the 1900s when most of the men went off the war that in America the women started working in factories to take care of the home. It was in the 20s, 30s that women began to work, you know. We're talking about less than 100 years, women just started coming to the workforce because the men, and that was because of war. Yes. What am I saying? You look around the city now, this is the college in the Bahamas, 70% women. Mm -hmm. I blame them, sisters, get your stuff. Yeah. They won't be lazy, no good bums. You let them and pray God you don't go spend six, seven years, get a degree, and pick up an old slugger. I will beat you up myself. Amen. <laughs> Single man. And I see every day I got to provide for just me. And I said, my God, not another mountain baby and children. Jesus, let me do this up now. Let me make a couple dollars now. Because when they come, boy, praise God, I won't be stressed for that. I'm more than enough by the grace of God. But yeah. let's see, 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 that's what's going on. Yes. And these sluggers and these jokers, hallelujah, yes. hallelujah, around the bar. They don't think, hey, they got a 200 salary. They won't blow that on bar and on things. Hallelujah. Don't think 200 out of the 800, 800 out of the 10,000 almost at the end of the year. You can do something with that. school. Girls stay focused in school. We're in graduation time. Top of the class, women. They go to COB. The bum and drunkard and the lazy bum go and knock about the place. Pick her up and drop off. Dumb thing you, you know, you get she getting a degree. Then she got that associate, she ain't looking for you. Then she go on to COB and now saw her stay. She meet them one or two that 10, 20, 30 percent who made it up there, right? That's who she talking to them. Yeah. God help she get that bachelor's and go off in the real world with man who invests the time. She ain't checking for that little fella. Yeah. Most of them, they're gone. They ain't checking for them. Come, what? Well, I ain't a woman to pick up sense now. <laughs> they go off and get a degree. But I still see some, they come back professional. They just fool around with them for the little piece, but. <laughs> They ain't married, they got sent, but they fool around with them. Better they could get it. Mm. But my point is, the fellas, if the fellas don't sow anything, they ain't gonna read nothing out of it. Mm. Prosperity. Mm. If we can see prosperity in this nation, we gotta break this system that's going on. A young man right now don't have a zeal to work and to work hard. Ain't no job, my God, let me tell you something. I could put on a white coat now 
Because I pump gas many days, many summers. I pack grocery many days, many summers. Hallelujah. From I was 12, 13, I was buying my own stuff. Pack grocery, mop floor. Parking boy, gas attendant, bank teller. Work free in the hospital. Pharmacy work summer one time. Work here. Work in the States. Work while I was in college. Came home, work as a teacher. Said and paid my way part in the medical school. It was so intense I couldn't work there. Come back, work in hospital, and have other jobs in ministry and other things doing the work of the Lord. Amen? And everything surrounding that. So if I put on a thing, I know what it is to work. You know what it is to work. But the man, we got to break this cycle. Yes. Somehow, that they feel they're too big to pump gas. Too big to clean yard. You call that, you know what they call that for? Well, that's for the other country immigrants to do it. And they're making the money. Cleaning the yard and pumping gas, yeah. especially in Nassau. Everybody go back at it, baby, baby, baby. Because the Bahamians now are too sophisticated to do those type of jobs, they feel. Amen? So, that's what I mean. my, my point in that is we got to break the spirit of laziness among the men and the nation. Everywhere you look, the women, the women, the women, the women. Most of the places. Because the spirit has come in and it needs to be broken for prosperity. Okay? So, now, look at The Lord wants to make us a thousand times so many more than men getting it tonight. That's the right prophet. The man getting it. That's the truth. The man needs to be changed. The Lord God, your Father, want to make you a thousand times so many more. Amen? Now, what do I mean? It's self-explanatory. Amen? The Lord. A thousand times more. Let me give you these points on the purpose of wealth that we're going to get out of here. I'll read the free one scripture. Write this down, the purpose of wealth. The purpose of wealth. The purpose of wealth. I believe the Lord switched us over the past couple weeks. In fact, from last year with that outsourcing thing, and the Spirit of the Lord descended powerfully in that taxi union hall building, and the power of God and this revelation began to start from then. That's when I really felt the anointing as I was ministering on that thing. Amen? Life has been totally changed. Amen? Right. When you obey God, don't mind who come and come. Well, aim for everyone, you know. No, 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 no. See, people of God, that's why I want this ministry walk by faith. God said, do let's move by faith. No, 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 no. We ain't doing it for show. We do it because God said do it. Now, this is a this is a practical point so well. The purpose of well, number one. Is to establish God's covenant in the earth. God told Abraham, I'm going to bless you so that all nations of the earth are blessed. Are you with me? The purpose, number one purpose of wealth is to establish the covenant of God in the earth. What does that mean? What does it mean? You, I, ministry must have a vision that is global in its impact. You see that? If God said, Abraham, I'm going to bless you tell all the nations the earth be blessed. What he was saying is, Abraham, I have put something in you which was Jesus. So, we, so that all countries and people around the world will be saved and delivered and financially blessed from your life. Did God fulfill that word? Yes. How? Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac begot Jacob. Jacob became Israel. Israel had 12 sons. 
One of his sons, Joseph. Joseph became the prime minister. The whole nation, the, the world was spared because of Joseph. Through Abraham's son, shot hallelujah. hallelujah. And Joseph had sons, and they had sons, and David came about, and David had sons, and the Messiah, Jesus, came 2,000 years ago. Has the whole world been blessed because of Jesus? Yes. yes. God placed something in Abraham that was generational. Point number two then. Wealth is generational. Wealth is generational. A wise man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. And I told you that the other day, and I'm doing it, and I'm putting this on you, men and women, that whatever you do today, you must think for at least 120 years down the line. Should the Lord tarry? But 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 you you, you don't have the you you're supposed to have such a vision that it affects three generations. Oh Savior, help me tonight. Y'all getting this tonight? Amen. The Lord said, everything you do from tonight, a wise man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. I mean, y'all what? Grandchildren. That mean you're supposed to do. What you do, and it's supposed to be so powerful financially and most importantly spiritually. Let's start with our spiritual inheritance. You know, I preach the way I preach because if the Lord tarries, I want my children, my grandchildren to talk about what grandpapa did. You know why I seek the Lord to live holy? I want my children, my grandchildren to be free from every curse Amen. and to talk about what their grandfather did in Jesus. Amen. I want to sow so much seed in the kingdom that if my life doesn't be long enough to enjoy all of it, my children and grandchildren will celebrate and rejoice and receive the blessing for all that I've sown. Amen. We're not living for ourselves. You don't generate wealth for yourself. What I can wear, what I can buy, what I can enjoy now. No, no, no. You don't understand wealth. Not God's kingdom way of wealth. I tired of hearing behind and say, well, if I dead, I dead. I leave it all behind. I can enjoy this life. I can eat this. Uh, I can wear this. I, when I dead, I will go empty and broke. That's dumb. That's dumb. That ain't biblical. That ain't the word. And saints say that. Marry me. I can be dead. I ain't leaving nothing behind for these children to be. You say, ha, ha, ha. You ain't kingdom in your thinking? These things people say is ignorance. Yeah. It's unscriptural. Yeah. And you see why they poor yeah. and busted and broke. Yes, and God said, you, with that type of thing, I'll mm. never give you no wealth for you to consume it on yourself. God is looking for people who are thinking generational. Mm. I believe yeah. a spiritual inheritance. That's why I wrote that book at 20-something. Amen? I was writing that from my mid-20s. By 27, it was completed. It wasn't like the other one. It was raw and rough around the edges. I've edited it three, four times since. Found thousands of correction. But I had something. I said, God, I gonna leave something that you put in my spirit for generations. At 20 something, I was thinking that. You know, I got these things recording in me now. And for the past couple of years, when there's only a handful of people, I preach like I'm preaching because now. I said, I always wanted something for the generations that have. Yes. And now the medium is here to do that. Mm -hmm. Because I want what God has put in me to be generational. I want it to be a legacy. I'm building a legacy now by the grace of God. I am until I'm like 50, 60, 70, 80, should the Lord tarry to build a legacy. I build a legacy in 20 and in 30s and however long the Lord 40, however long Jesus take or he called me home. A legacy! That's my point. Amen. Are you building a legacy? Are you building a leg? Hmm. Amen? Are you just building a leg to walk on for now? Or are you building a legacy? We'll see. You'll see how you spend. That tells me you build a legacy. Let me see how you invest. See the legacy. Let me see you buying a property and land and putting in your children's name. Amen? Children come now. Hey, children have property. Now that my father gave me what I God gave me. Amen. 
might be swamped now. But when the time comes of Jesus tarry, they can sell it or build on it and start off greater than where I start. Amen. I should have to suffer my life and then when they come, they suffer the same way. No. Your children must go further than where you've been. Amen. Your grandchildren must come on the same oh, Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ came 2,000 years ago. It's no lie. It is real. He went on a cross and that night before going on the cross, he was beaten beyond recognition. He was beaten with a, uh, some people say with a rod, some people say with a cat of nine tails with bones and metal in there. And he, the Roman soldiers took that and lashed into his body 39 times. With every one of those lashes, his flesh was torn and blood spewed from his body. He was beaten beyond recognition that night. The next morning, very next morning, he took upon a heavy piece of log that they put on his body to drive through the streets all the way to a place called Golgotha's Hill. It was so heavy, so excruciating, he had lost so much blood, he was so dehydrated that he just couldn't bear lifting that cross alone. They took it from him and put it on one of his followers, who took that cross to the hill. To the hill they took nails, rusty nails, and it's recorded that they drove it through either the wrist or the center of the hand and in both sides so that he would hang. His body's weight hung upon that cross, upon that tree with those nails in his hand. If that was not enough. They pierced him in his feet, both feet together, nails driven through his feet. They pierced them in his side with a spear, took a prickle, thorny uh, wrap and made a crown and stuck it in his head and the thorns pushed through his scalp and the blood vessels burst and, and blood spewed from his head. And the Bible said he was wounded for our transgression, he was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his very stripes that he took with those beatings, we are healed. This is no fairy tale. This is no joke. This is real. Jesus Christ of Nazareth died so that we may live. The Bible said, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It also said, with your mouth you confess. If you believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus Christ, and you confess with your mouth that He is Lord, you shall be saved. If you believe that today, wherever you are, He came to die for all races, all colors, male and female, every nationality. He died so that we may live and be spared from eternal hell. The most powerful thing about this story is, the Bible said he, Jesus went into the grave and He took the power of death and hell and the power of sin and evil from every, from the authority of Satan. And he rose from the dead on the third day, showing that he had power over death and over sin, over disease, over human suffering. That he is truly God and Lord. And if you just confess with your mouth and you believe this today, he can come into your life like he did for me and he did for people here and people, so many people around the world who we know and took them off of coke and took them off of alcohol, took them from being depressed and oppressed and burdened and, 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 and tormented and suicidal and felt like giving up because of the weight of the world, healed physical bodies from sickness, disease and infirmity, broke things out of their lives where they could not produce and could not advance and gave them hope and gave them life. This Jesus is real. And if you accept him today, he can turn your life around. This is the prayer I want you to say. Repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose from the dead. I believe you showed yourself to the disciples many days. I want you to come into my life, take my life, and cleanse me with your blood. Let your blood renew me to you. Let your Holy Spirit come into my life, save me and transform me, and make me yours. 
Lord, let your kingdom and the laws of your kingdom govern my life. And let me fulfill my destiny in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you say that prayer, contact us, email us, call us, let us know that you say that prayer. And let everyone know, find a church um, where you uh, can grow in the word and study the Bible and grow in the things in this new life. You've been born again. You were once lost, but now you're found. If you say that today, we, we celebrate with you. Heaven celebrates with you. Please contact us. We love you. We're excited that you made that commitment to serve Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Blessings in the name of Jesus. We are so delighted that you took the time with your family and your loved one to tune into this broadcast. Kingdom Impact Production. We have been doing all we could to get this gospel of the kingdom out. I pray that this message really transform your heart. That you would spend some time today reflecting on it. You will go to your Bible and go through and study what was taught. And really implement those things. The Lord has a great purpose for your life. We are standing with you. Here at Kingdom Apostolic Ministries, we request your prayer, your financial support. Please visit us on our website. Please see us on the various mediums that will come up on this site. And follow us. I would love to hear from you. Please email, call, Skype me. All the methods you can. Please let us know that you're with us praying for us. And be a blessing if you can. Please bless us with any donation. No donation is too big or too small. Again, God bless you. We look forward to you joining us again for another presentation. Amen.